Hi, welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode number 45. This episode, we're going to be talking about our approaches to photography, basically what we're thinking about when we're out in the field taking photos. Could be the field, could be the studio, could be in my backyard. Stick around and you'll find out a little bit more. Hi, my name is William Beam, and I was voted most courageous in my nine-year-old Little League. <laughs> yes, the, it's actually sounding framed here. I look at it every day when I'm working at the desk. I know. It's like I just saw that and I thought, you know, that's, that's important for people to know. I see it every I, day. I, I've got something framed from when I was in a nine-year-old Little League. It's a little Charlie Brown drawing and, and it says most courageous, which is kind of the, the nice way of saying it's like, well, we don't know what else to say about this kid, so... <laughs> I think it's really cute. It wasn't like he was best player, best hitter, best catcher or anything like that. He was most courageous. In other words, he went out there and tried really hard and didn't quit. Actually, do you know what? That's better than winning to me. Well, nine-year-old, that's really what I was. I didn't do anything useful at all when I was in nine years old in Little League until the very last game of the season. And I hit a line drive that got me a triple. And then the mm. next year, 10-year-old, I was the slugger. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So there you go. That's, that's your fascinating fact about me. Which has absolutely nothing to do with our topic today. And we wanted to talk about our approaches to photography and basically what's kind of going through our mind when we're out taking photographs. I have found out that uh, through discussion, Lee and I have very different things going through our mind, which is usually means that <laughs> either one of us assists one of the other or we leave each other alone. We don't necessarily <laughs> shoot together. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start off with this a little bit. And my idea is I want to know that I've got a purpose for the photo that I'm going after. Generally speaking, I've, I've got a purpose. There's going to be some kind of story behind it. And if possible, I've got a vision in my head already of what the photo is going to be. Now, what I go through trying to make that stuff is, is really kind of, uh, it's, it's hectic at times because things work, things don't work, and you've got to kind of go through and solve your problems. But you know what you're working towards. But Lee, you've, you've got a different approach. I've got a different approach. Now, this is not counting if I'm out on assignment to get something specific, which we might touch on a little bit later. But for my own photography, I like to go in with no plan. I like to pick a lens that I think, okay, this one. And then I go in and see what I can get with that one. And you get lots of surprises like that. Sometimes you come away with little or nothing. But I'm usually not, I don't have any kind of devastation level disappointments with that. I think what, what you're going to do and what you're going to think about really depends upon the type of photography that you're doing. In my case, I typically prefer either doing travel photography, portrait photography, or it's going to be something for an assignment. So for in other words, we've mentioned before, we have another site called Orlando Local, and we've got another one coming up that might have some pet photography involved, which, yes. uh, which we're not going to bring up just yet. But I've got specific genres of photography that I want to do. And depending on what I'm going to be doing, that really determines how I'm going to be thinking about it and, and what stages I'm going to go through. But when you talk about just, have you got your your camera and a lens, it almost sounds kind of like street photography. You're going to walk out and see what you get. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's not completely unplanned. I, I have an idea. For example, I'm going to a specific place. You've got some kind of idea what sort of photos you're likely to get. There are certain things, but I'm not, I never, or should I say very, very rarely do I go somewhere and I've got one specific shot in mind. I think the rare exceptions for me are fireworks. And even then, it's kind of see what I can get. I have an idea what focal length I want to use and where I want to shoot from. And that's pretty much it. So that's the extent of my planning from results backwards. I think you you prefer to look at the the end result that you're shooting for and then work backwards through the steps to to getting that. And I'm the other way. I tend to walk in and go, oh, oh wait, wait, there's a photo. Wait, I'll catch up with you. So do you walk out, take some photos and think, OK, here's a story I can tell to go with this or a story that I observed while I was taking this photo? Whereas I think I want to know my story first and then go find, for lack of a better word, I want to go find evidence to support that story. I like to find my story as I'm walking around. Okay. And sometimes through the photographs, I find a story. I might start with something and think, oh, and it's almost like a little breadcrumb trail that leads me somewhere. It's really a, a, my my photography side is, is you know, that, that works with my creative side. And it almost defies everything about me and the way that I, I handle every other area in my life, which is usually terribly, annoyingly organized. And you're, I'm very, the, you're very annoyingly organized. But I'm the complete opposite. When it comes to creativity, I, 
I'm just one of those people where I'll download some kind of template and the first thing I do is switch off any kind of prompts or help or assistance to tell me that something's hanging off the edge and going to be cut up. Yep, that's on purpose. All right, let me ask you this. Are you doing photography generally because you enjoy the creative aspect of it and it's just an escape from other things? Or and there are times, you know, maybe I'll ask you to do an assignment. Are the two things kind of different in your mind or are you still going off exploring to see what you can get? They... For the most part, they I would say they are almost entirely different. Even with an assignment, I there is still that part of me because I've got a camera in my hand. I want to go and see what I'm going to get. I, I like looking at things from different angles. And I think that is just the way I am. I've, I've got a strange take on life sometimes. And I think I, that sort of comes out in the way that I look, look through my photos and the way I create things. But with an assignment... I do follow more of a structured plan because obviously there's stuff that you need to get and you've got some kind of order and that you're working towards the big picture. All right, let's look at uh, primary. Primarily for you is photography, a creative outlet. It is, yes. And so that you're, you're really into photography just because you want to have fun. It's a creative outlet. And I guess for lack of a better word, it's an escape. It is an escape and it's also a way to capture my memory. So it's kind of, a, I guess, an escape from the present if I want to go and, you know, spend some time reminiscing in in happiness of past experiences but it's it's a nice way to to merge my happy memories with today do you plan ahead and say like okay on this day i'm going to go out and take photos or do you just say oh, i'm in the mood let's go see what's there i'm in the mood i find creativity is a mood thing and when when you're working that's different you go and you get the job done and i think that is maybe the reason why my approach is a little bit different and I actually enjoy both. I've, I've found it a refreshing break to have some kind of structure to the photography assignments. And I've thoroughly enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I do like to have a bit of the balance. All right. So you've got to be in the mood. Is it, Now, here's the question. And I hate this word, but are you waiting for inspiration to strike? Inspiration doesn't strike. I didn't There's, think so. No, it doesn't strike. What? I mean, I... If you have your eyes open and you just relax about things instead of being uptight about, I've got to get this specific shot, you will see things that you would otherwise miss. Because if you're so tunnel vision focused on your one end result, you're going to lose your peripheral vision. And sometimes that's where the real treasures are. Okay, give me some examples of things that you've caught that maybe other people might have missed or, or things that your peripheral vision picked up. Well, I, I remember setting up one night to take firework shots and I had, it, it was just one of those evenings that required a lot of preparation. And I was sitting in my spot probably for the better part of 90 minutes. I had a young child with me and I had to keep her entertained. I mean, it probably wasn't fun for her and she, she was pretty good about it. And as the show started, the heavens opened up. I mean, it was just torrential Florida downpour. Mm -hmm. I, my camera is weather resistant. It's not waterproof. And I had no option. I had to pick up and go. The other thing is that I was really, really sick. And I probably shouldn't have been out anyways at the time. So I was feeling horrible. And I went and I died for cover. And I honestly thought that I'd, I'd lost everything. And I kind of sat down for probably about an hour. And everybody left. And as I was walking out, the rain had stopped. And I saw these beautiful reflections with these colored, colored lights. And I took a completely different photo. And that was my, my treasure. Um, th th there have been a few situations where I've turned around and seen something else where everybody else is focused on the show. I sometimes like to turn around, look at the people. I actually, you know what, it, this, it's surprising to me, but we are both alike in that because I'll go out there, I'll plan what I want to take and the fireworks shots like you were talking about. Let's say that's what I was going out there for. I'll set up for that. And you're right. Sometimes an event happens, if a thunderstorm comes down, you're just not going to get that shot. Yeah. You need to move and leave. But you got to be open still. You can't be so rigid that you miss opportunities around you. Yeah. So maybe you don't get the fireworks, but the reflections are, especially with the lighting. Uh, in this case, we're talking about at, at Walt Disney World. Stuff like, yeah. The lighting and the reflections just really make it a, a wonderful scene. It may, may not be what you thought you were going to get, but you still come home with something that you can keep and love. That's right. And the irony is that it would be easier to redo the firework shots because that happens every night there. Mm -hmm. to, to try and do a retake of that specific shot I got. That is very, you know, I'd, it would be luck. Planning generally isn't going to guarantee me that shot in at all. So, and it, it's it's sort of a, a strange little twist in things. Sometimes you just need to look to the side. Sometimes you get sidelined somewhere. You don't get where you want to be. And sometimes I also accept that there's a point where you go, I'm not going to fight this because I'm not going to get it. 
Well, you need to, like you said, you need to be open to the possibilities that are around you. And it doesn't hurt to change your plan sometimes. Sometimes you can get both what you're shooting for and then go ahead and take advantage of the opportunity. Other times the opportunity is going to be fleeting. You have to get it, take advantage of it right then or you're never going to get it. That's right. I think the point is if you focused on one thing very specifically, you're probably going to do it very well. But you have to accept that you're going to miss anything else that might be happening around you because you're, you're sort of solely focused. Well, um, well, here's the other dilemma that you face. Let's say that you know I can get one or the other. You've got to make a decision. Am I going to get the one that I planned for that, I, that I'm here to get? Or am I going to say, no, this is better. Let me go over and move over there. And I guess that kind of depends upon your purpose for being there. I suppose that would. I think on an assignment, I would go and get what I needed to get because there's, there's a purpose. And usually with an assignment, there are other people depending on you. Mm -hmm. So that, that is something completely different. For myself, I have a tendency to want to buck the trend. So if I went planning to get something and I see something else, I am more likely to say, I'm going to risk it. Now, there are, there are ways, though, that you can use your creativity and still keep the assignment. And this is... This is me making it up on the spot, but let's say that you find that it rained and fireworks are still going off. And then you look down in the reflection, you see the fireworks in the reflection. Yeah. Who said that you can't shoot the fireworks from the reflection that they have to be up in the sky like everybody else shoots? Oh, absolutely. And I probably would have, you know, like I say, people are an example. People watching because the expression on people's faces when they just mesmerized. I mean, you've got these long exposures and there's very little blur mm -hmm. of the people because everyone just freezes. It's like this calm comes over everybody. Well, and that's one of the things that I also like is when you're shooting something for an assignment, or even if I'm shooting it for myself, I still want to see a story. Whereas I think you're saying it's like, I want a photo rather than a story. I build my story from the photos because to me, the photos sort of document my experience. They might not be in the right order when and, I take them. And but, I think of something that I was told, you know, it's like, if you're going to shoot an assignment or a story, you're going to shoot it from big to small. So the fireworks over the castle are the big thing. Yes. If you can see the guys preparing for the fireworks and you get some shots of that, that's part of the story. But also there's the whole crowd that's looking up there. And I think photos of the crowd, particularly if you can get, you know, someone's face as, as the burst goes off, you know, it's going to show some light on their face. Yes. It's, and particularly if they've got glasses on, you can see the reflection of the fireworks. There, you can. There, there, there are, uh -huh. there are some interesting elements of the story. So I, I look at photo photography mostly as a collection of images for a story. And, and it, you're right. I think it also depends how much time you have. For example, you'll go out and you'll devote a day to a sign, you know, to a photography thing. I'm going to give you our classic example because we live here, going to Walt Disney World to one of the parks and you'll go somewhere specific. You'll have some photos or a photo in mind. You'll go and get it. You might get a few other things. You'll come back. But if you're documenting a story there for that day, you will get, you know, your detail, you'll get the big picture and you'll, you'll kind of then start almost zooming in, so to speak. Now, I think I, I mean, that little ebook that you wrote about Walt Disney World photography. Oh, that's I mean, that, that, that changed. I mean, that really changed the way that I took photos. And I, I was on vacation. I had three weeks to do this. So yes, it did impact me. And yes, I did think about the story like that, but I think I probably didn't recognize, um, it wasn't restrictive on me in any way because I had so many days to do it. So whereas you go for one day and try and get your story, I had 21 days to go and do it, mm -hmm. which meant it was pretty easy. It almost, well, I suppose it depended which lens, you know, I had a range of lenses from wide angle from a 10.5 millimeter fisheye all the way through to a 70 to 300 zoom. So, I mean, that was already kind of giving me my, my options and everything in between. And the ebook she's talking about is something I put out uh, about four years ago. It's called Capture the Magic. It was specifically about photography at uh, Walt Disney World and the Magic Kingdom. And I had a couple of things in there that Lee and I have talked about uh, behind the scenes. You know, I didn't realize that she had actually used it as much as she had. I did. I actually posted links all over the place. In fact, I got into trouble on some forums. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know. I was trying to be helpful. I was so excited because people were asking. Wow, you know what? What changed your photo? You really upped the game with your photos this year. What happened? And so I gave credit where credit was due. Um, yeah, I, it, it was kind of cool to get into trouble for it, but I I emailed my husband, who wasn't my husband at the time, and told him how much I loved it. And the next thing, I invited him for a drink, and well, we're married. Exactly. So 
There you go. Start a blog, write it was an a, ebook, and you can get married to it. It was a damn good e- <laughs> That was a good book. I've, I've taken that offline. And you know what? Maybe I, sh- I kind of want to redo it and, and put it back up. So maybe I'll work on it over the next coming weeks or months. You should. It really, I mean, even if it doesn't necessarily have to be a Disney book, but the whole concept of, of you know, with the examples that you had made it so easy. Because I was quite a new photographer. Well, when I say, you know, I was new to the world of DSLR. I think it only had a at DSLR for about a year or so. Well, I, I was taking advice that I'd learned from other photographers. And, you know, one of the ones I got from Joe McNally, I really loved, I put in the book, which was Think Like a Coffee Table Book. You don't just go out there and shoot the main subject. You shoot all sorts of things and details that are around it. You know, you tell the story about what's in that coffee table book. Because if someone's going to buy a coffee table book about something, they really want to know everything. Yeah. And that's kind of the way I use that as an approach to how to take your photographs at Walt Disney World. See, I love the coffee table book. As soon as he said the word book, he had me hooked that I wanted to see more because I mean, I'm i I'm a scrapbook person. I, I love my scrapbooking. I love my photo albums. I love making my, my digital online um, books and, and templates and pages and things. And I'm often, I'm usually looking for backgrounds and all of these little software things that you can get have got their own pre-installed things where you can buy or, or download extras. I kind of don't want to use them because somebody else has used them. And it, it sounds silly, but I want my stuff to be totally mine. I want it to be totally different. And if I'm going to use something generic, well, you know, maybe I'll use it as part of something. But I, I'll often have a look at something and I, I don't get the shot I want, but I'll look at some trees with some bright red flowers somewhere in between. I think, ooh, background, mm-hmm. that would work. But, so I've got lots of photos that look like nothing when you're looking at the photos, but in my mind, I know what I want to do with them, you know, maybe make them a bit translucent, transparent or. And, and that's really the way I work is I, I want to have a purpose behind why I'm taking the photographs. And you know that uh, you may not know what coffee table book or what kind of scrapbooking you're going to do before you go there, but you know the elements that you need. So even yeah. if you don't know what you're going to shoot, you've got a structure in your mind of the kind of things that can work for you. Yes. It's like you don't know that it's going to be this wall, but you know that you need a background. That's right. You, you yep. don't know that it's going to be flowers or a coffee mug or whoever, you know, whatever little detail it is. Mm-hmm. But you know that there are going to be details. There are going to be backgrounds. There are going to be major elements. That's right. I mean, I like to make my own birthday cards and invitations and whatever. And um, so I, I like to have my own backgrounds and things. And, and I guess that's kind of really where our approach is, although different on the surface. Underneath, we're really getting down to the fact that We've got a purpose, and it may not be that I'm going for this specific photo when I go out. We know that there are elements that we're trying to capture. And in my case, I know there's a story that I always want to tell and how to put it together. I think it's really in your case, too, because if you want to do a scrapbook, you know that you need elements to put it together. And the scrapbook itself is kind of like the whole story. Oh, absolutely. I'm looking for things, but I'm sometimes not looking for something specific. I'm looking to see what I can find that will work, and mm-hmm. I'll just spot things. So I guess I'm, I kind of go in there almost pretty relaxed, and I'll see something go at that. That, that's this. Exactly. Your your creativity is on the spot, but you know the elements, the type of elements that you need I'll recognize, before you get there. Yeah, I'll recognize it when I see it. Whereas I will go in there with something specific in mind. For composition, my biggest thing when I go someplace, if, if I'm shooting something, a, a big story is, what's going to be my angle for the, for the big shot? Yeah. And I will stand there for hours if I need to, just to make sure that I've got that spot. Oh, I'll do that too. I, and it's hard sometimes. Oh, especially, especially when the sun is... And the, yeah, when the sun is beating down here, there's no place to sit. It's just, it can I be know, miserable it sometimes. It can be horrible. Well, now at least we can do it as a team and take turns going and getting drinks and stuff. I know, but then as soon as, we, as soon as you get up and go get a drink, someone else wants to sit down underneath you, right next to That's where you are. That's why we take a big camera bag. <laughs> That's the, the troubles of taking photos at Walt Disney World. But, you know, we go to some other places and it's not such a big deal. We've been off to Las Vegas for our honeymoon yes. and we had some, some nice... We, had took, we didn't take any cameras except for the, our iPhone. And we, we still looked at things the way that we normally look at them. We did, yes. And we still got the same elements. We, we were taking a lot of photos of food. We went to House of Blues one night and you were taking photos of like close-up elements. I think even bottle caps on some of the furniture that was out I there. did. And, you know, I've used those all over the place. I, I really enjoyed it. I must say that Las Vegas trip was where I really got into using my iPhone for photos. To me, a phone was to take snapshots to remind me of things. They were reminders. In, it's really good for detail shots, isn't but it? But I, I really enjoyed it. I don't even have one of the newer iPhones. I've got the, the old 5S. Mm-hmm. And even with that, I'm I'm perfectly happy. You know, it, it, it serves its purpose. I did realize, I mean, I thought the iPhone camera, the iPhone 5 camera was absolutely dreadful. 
And after about six months, I realized it was so much better when I took that protective film. Yeah, that, that's going to help. <laughs> I had no idea. I was telling everyone I didn't know what the big deal you, is about this iPhone camera. You were shooting through cellophane. I said, even my dreadful Blackberry was better. Um, yeah, I know. I kind of felt silly about that and I still get teased about it. No, not by me. I would I, never do that. No, <laughs> well, now you will because I didn't tell you that before. All right, let's take a look at uh, a couple of other types of photography. So I mentioned one of the things I enjoy doing is portrait photography. In that case, I know I'm going to have some kind of uh, a theme. So I've, I've got a model. If I'm lucky, I might have an assistant and, uh, of course, a makeup artist or someone. There's going to be wardrobe to go with it. Everything's got to be kind of stylized in advance. Yes. So because I, if we just all show up there and say, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? We're going to get some really boring, dull photos. Oh, definitely. When you're working with people, you you need to have some kind of plan, even if it's just a basic outline. You've got to have some sort of order. And it doesn't mean that you've got to do everything meticulously to a T and just get those specific shots. And, you know, unless you're working for a client that needs something. If you're doing it for, you know, creativity and I'm working on, for example, my portfolio or a model's working on his or hers, then you could, you've got the freedom to come up with things depending on what you find. Yes. But I kind of like having at least a skeleton of a plan when I get there. I want to know, are we shooting something that's going to be fine art? Are we shooting something that's going to be glamour? Are we shooting even a pinup style? What, whatever it is going to be. And what are the elements that we're going to take with us? Because that's going to direct the makeup artist as to how they're going to do hair and makeup. That's going to direct the wardrobe. It's going to make, it's even going to direct which model you uh, get for the job. That's true. Because, yes. you know, some models do pin up really well, but they don't necessarily do other types of, of photography, you know, modeling very well. And it's not really a criticism as it is that people are better at certain things, I think. We all have different strengths. Well, they, they have different strengths, but you also have different interests. The models I've known in who work in pinup really know that genre very well. And they, they know the poses, they know the clothes, they know how the, the expressions, particularly. One of the things I found out, if I just go out with a model and we don't have a plan, usually the thing I worry about most are expressions and armpits. Yes, or no expressions and too much armpits. Exactly. I, when I'm working with a new model, typically they're, they're holding their arms up on their head and they're showing me their armpits, which I, I really don't need to see. And claw hands. And claw hands and, and, and blank expressions. Now, blank expressions can work in some photos. But there are times where I want some kind of expression. I want some kind of feeling or emotion coming from the model's face. Yeah. And, you know, they, they've got to be, you know, a bit of an actor or actress to, to kind of bring that across. And that's why I'm usually out there saying stupid things, just trying to see if I can either crack them up. Do you some, feel something and show it? If I can make them angry, sometimes that works better than if I make them laugh. <laughs> that also depends on what kind of photos you're taking. Now, the next thing I'm going to be looking at, as I mentioned, is pet photography. I've got very, very little experience with pet photography. And all I know is trying to do it with puppies is not something you ever want to do alone. Uh, no. Because I, I did this with our dog Milo when he was a tiny little puppy. And Milo was, uh, well, My Milo was all over the place. Milo hasn't changed. No, Milo wants to lick the lens. Milo wanted to jump up in my lap. He, he wanted to be close to me. He wanted to have fun. And trying to get dogs to sit and look interesting or mean, or whatever it is that you want to get out of the animal. I don't think you want a mean animal, at least I no. don't. I, I saw something that was going around on Facebook last week, though. It was an interesting meme of a photographer who captures dogs at right at the moment that you're he's tossing a treat to their mouth. Yes. And they've got these big bulging eyes and just their sm it, it looks like a smile, you know, where they're just lunging towards the tree. Some of them were actually going cross-eyed, as you could see the thing coming towards their mouth. It was so funny. And I, I apologize, <laughs> I don't recall the photographer's name, but I thought it was genius work. So It was brilliant, it really was. <laughs> and But that's someone who's approaching with, you know, a plan, and that's that's me. I've got to, I've got to walk into this with some kind of plan. I don't mind deviating from the plan or adding to the plan if circumstances arise, but I've got to walk in there with a plan. I'll get mildly annoyed at anything that gets in my way of the plan, but I'll still walk out of there saying, I got to come out with a photo. Yes. I'm, I'm not, I may not get the photo I want, but I've still got to leave with a photo, something I can use. Yes. Whereas when you're going out there just to be creative, do you, does it bother you if you go home and say, well, you know, I didn't get anything today? Oh, oh, I get really annoyed. I come back and I say, I've got nothing. You, I mean, when was it last week you picked me up after a day out? Mm-hmm. And I didn't get all the categories. I had a, a, a loose outline. I, I did go with some sort of framework. There were certain categories of photos I was looking to get. I knew I wasn't going to get everything. 
but I had some sort of guideline within which to work. When I came back, it just felt like I'd lost everything. And the reason why I felt like that was there was only one. It was a rare thing for me, but I had one specific photo in mind, a series of like ridiculous events that you could never have predicted. Just one thing after another got in the way of it. And despite all the time I devoted to that shot, there was nothing I could have done. I wasn't going to get it. It happens, you know, sometimes I've, I'm glad I'm not a wildlife photographer because you can go out there and set up and think, OK, where's the animal? Yes. Why aren't you here on this on this branch, you know, with uh, looking at some prey or something like that? I well, don't know what they need to do for animals. But. This, this is what happened that day. And the, I, I guess it's because it was the last thing I did before I left. And in my mind, when I left, the first thing you said to me was, did you get some nice photos? And I said, well, not really. When I got home, I thought, well, actually, I did. Mm -hmm. um, but you just didn't get the ones that you had in mind. I'm not used to planning very specific shots. And for that day, there were a few that I had planned. I guess I haven't learned to work with disappointments based on a series of very specific shots. And that I, I had to sort of learn a lesson in that. I actually did get photos. And there were the photos I would have been happy with anyway, had, you know, if I'd gone my usual style. But because I had a plan, it, it's a bit of a learning curve for me. And I, I kind of messed up in, in the way that I handled it, I guess, and I can learn from that. And also messed up in, in sometimes in my approach being too, you can get too locked into something. That, that's interesting, though. So your your odds of being satisfied with what you come out with are better if you don't have a plan going into it. Yeah. And I wouldn't say I, I used to go in with absolutely, I, I never go in with no idea. I mean, well, I well yeah, because you're going to. You're going to a specific place, whether yes. it's Glasgow or whether it's, you know, Magic Kingdom. You're going somewhere. So you have an idea of what may be there. That's right. And you, you fit the lens accordingly. And I've also gone in where I've, I mean, you know, more than once. I, I've, I've made this error way too many times that I've taken the wrong lens. I thought I had something. I had something else. Mm -hmm. You end up, it, it's kind of funny how it just changes everything. I could pack my camera away and say, well, it, it's all wrecked. I'm not going to get anything for today. Or you can say, well, let's see what I can get with, with, with what I have. Well, I, that's happened to me. I was on a business trip out in San Francisco, and I, I wasn't really there as a photography trip. I just brought my camera stuff along for the time when I wasn't working. And I went up to the Cliff House to have dinner. I was cleaning a lens. I had the Nikon 18 to 200 millimeter lens, which is good, you know, a good travel lens. Nice one. And I happen to have a Tequina 12 to 24. And my first night there, I'm cleaning the lens at the table, waiting for my food to come. And I turn it upside down to clean the other element. And I heard this loud crack. Oh, no. And that was the front element fell out of the barrel of the lens and just cracked on the hard How floor. How did that happen? I mean, was it a that's, faulty lens? It's what I would call poor quality control on Nikon's part. Oh, my but goodness. But it, it literally just fell out and cracked. And I thought, okay, I was supposed to go down to the beach and shoot the Golden Gate Bridge and at sunset. And, you know, even the sunset didn't really work out. It was just one of those overcast nights. So I've got... I've got my photo of the Golden Gate Bridge is on a very blue hour night and which kind of works for the Golden Gate since it's, you know, a nice warm color. Yeah. And I did that with a 12 to 24. It's the Golden Gate's too far away. I had a very different image in my head. Uh, but you know what? That was the only lens I could work with. And that's what I had to use. Do you know what's really funny about that? If you told me I was going to shoot the Golden Gate Bridge and I had those. Well, I, I had the Zucchini 11 to 16, not the 12 to 24. But of the two, that's probably the one I would have taken, assuming that it would be better. So it's interesting that you you tried it and said what well, you knew. Well, I was the beach that I was at was a bit further away than I would want to use that wide angle of the oh, lens. Okay. You All know, right. if you got it closer to it, sure, absolutely. But right. I, I was a little further away. I, I planned on using focal length a bit more to kind of okay. compress the images and All so right. forth. But you know what? I got a shot. I'm not disappointed with a shot. It's just not the shot that I planned on. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, that's the way it goes. All right. We hope this has been helpful for you. If you're interested, we've got a transcript of this show available for you at williambeam.com slash episode 45. Thank you very much for joining us on the Photo Flunky Show. If you'd like to keep with us, keep there. Uh, let me try this again. If you'd like to keep up with us on social media, you can do so on Twitter. It's at photo flunky and on facebook it is william beam photography you can find links to this episode and all of the other ones at photoflunky.com and of course if you'd like to subscribe we would love that go to williambeam.com slash itunes or slash google play or slash stitcher or even slash blueberry 
Thank you very much. We'll see you here again next week.